My dear friends, I'd like to speak to you today. Uh, much of the information that St. Augustine gives in his second sermon on this feast day. The sinner shall borrow and shall not pay again, but the just man showeth mercy and shall give. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The sinner receives, but he does not give in return. We see today the ten lepers. Nine of them received. Excuse me, ten of them received. Nine did not return. They do not return to give thanks to Almighty God. God desires nothing but what is good for you. God gives you nothing. But what is good for your soul? The sinner receives so many wondrous gifts from God, which can never be adequately repaid. The sinner has received existence. The sinner has received manhood, which separates him from the beast of the earth. The sinner receives powers that go above his manhood. Even the sense powers, the power to feel, the see, to hear, to touch. He receives powers of the hands to discern what is hot and cold, what is smooth and soft. He receives power to the feet to walk upon the earth and health to enjoy a great part of his life, not always all of his life. These sense gifts we share with the beast. But they cannot enjoy them as we do. But we've received so much more than these gifts. We received an understanding that we might grasp the truth, that we might discern what is just, that we may praise and long for the Creator, our Lord and God. The sinner does not repay goodness for goodness. The sinner returns evil for the graces he has received from Almighty God. And because the sinner does not repay, he remains poor. He remains empty. Those nine lepers got their health back, but they were empty men. In my mind. Because the just returns love and mercy and gratitude to God, no matter how little he has, he is rich. The rich may have few possessions, but he looks upon these few possessions with the eyes of the faith. The sinner, he mourns when the purse is empty, while the saint only sees God and his conscience. How much can one give from charity and not exhaust his store? If one outwardly has nothing to give, he still has something to give. He gives counsel. He gives help. He gives kindness. The currency of the elect. If one cannot help with counsel, he helps with desire and with prayer. He still has something to give. He who is filled with the virtue of charity always has something to give. Sympathy is more pleasing and more valuable to those mourning than a loaf of bread. Another word for charity is goodwill. God asks no more of you than that which he has placed in your hearts. A goodwill is a gift in itself. And one who has no goodwill, no matter how much he may possess, has nothing to give. Even if he is rich in material goods, the poor help each other out of goodwill. And they are never without fruit, the person of goodwill. The blind man is led by another who sees, who has sight. In a sense, the blind man has loaned the eyes of the sightful, which is not a correct word, I know. 
This is a greater gift than dropping a coin in the cup of the blind. Charity loans itself. Charity loans its own members to one who is deficient. The blind man is more comforted by the poor neighbors leading him safely through the streets than by some monetary gift. The just man, that must be you, shows mercy and charity to the poor. The just man is conscious and solicitous for the poor. In many of our chapels, we take up collections for the poor. Let us give thanks to our Lord and Savior, who without any previous merit of ours has healed our wounds, has given us every good thing we possess, made us friends who were his enemies, redeemed us from our captivity, led us from darkness to light, and recalled us from death to life. He who has deigned to give us his flesh and his blood and grace of every kind may also deign to safeguard and increase those virtues in our souls. In a few moments, many of you will receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Let us make a worthy thanksgiving as we do a preparation for Holy Communion. Let us make a worthy thanksgiving for his life-giving sacrifice. Like the one leper who returned to give thanks. Be that leper. And remember that our heart is too little for an adequate return of love. God love you and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.